Hey, how's it going everybody? Today we're gonna bring our first video for this channel that we just made and it is a video on commentary, dual commentary I should say, for the Crisis 2 New York game. So this game just gonna uh, come out at the end of March but the demo was released about two weeks ago and we're gonna play, show you a gameplay on PC. Basically, there's two maps. There's uh, the main one, Skyline, which was the only one that the Xbox version allowed, but the PC version allows two maps. Uh, in this video, I'm using an MK60 Mod Zero, which is the heavier machine gun. Uh, it's the gunner class. When you get to about rank 5, you get to allow customization of your class. You get to choose different, um, different perks, uh, different pistols, and different lethal grenades. Yeah, that's right. I, just from the very beginning, I can really notice how crisp all the graphics are and how lively this map is, even though it's a shooter, gory game. Together, it, they kind of made a really good job of mixing everything together. It's not tacky at all, and it really complements how the recent shooter games are better in the new age. All right, now let's talk about actual gameplay. You get four abilities. There's armor, camouflage, Super strength and super speed. If you played any of the first game or Crisis Warhead, you'd kind of be familiar with those controls already. The main difference is energy usage. They change the energy usage of pretty much every ability in this game. The armor uses a lot less energy. The sprinting uses about the same energy, but the energy recharge is a lot quicker. Also, to tell when uh, I'm using armor or camouflage in the video, when you see these hexagons all around the edge of the screen, that's when I turn armor on. It pretty much adds a little bit to your HP and lets you survive hits that would normally kill you. Yeah. So I think uh, just to give a little bit of a recap on the previous game, just for the, in case so you, some of you guys don't know about the entire game and if you never ever played the previous versions. So this game is basically you're uh, fighting in a U.S. Marine and Army in different uh, regions of the... Uh, forces and you're basically against the North Koreans that are having some secret army research to, uh, and they're kind of cooperating with alien forces from other worlds apparently and you try to first in the first games you're actually in the Asian regions and the jungles in the North Korea and you again try to find out what's wrong what's going on and eventually you start seeing more alien forces and at the end of it, you pretty much uh, know what's going on and they start attacking New York. And in this new Crisis 2 version, you're actually in the middle of New York City on this high-riser high uh, roof that you can see we're playing on. Also, if anybody, if anybody plays Call of Duty, uh, the main things that are like Call of Duty is the game just recently, compared to the titles before, in its multiplayer added a points and reward system where if you avenge a friend's death or you save a wounded teammate or just kill the person who killed you, you get extra bonus points as a reward. Also, things that are like Call of Duty is the, the ranking and the allowance of three different perks. And the perks are actually, you know, less recoil, faster reload, things that you'd be familiar with if you played earlier Call of Duty titles. Another thing I don't like is, uh, ability-wise, the super jump seems to be the number one waste of energy. It uses the most energy and it really doesn't even add too much of a difference. So here you can see a little bit of the gameplay. Um, I'd say if you're comparing this gun that we're using, which is a heavy machine gun, it's okay in the way of uh, just aiming targets that are like people who are near to you or mid-range away from you but if you're trying to shoot people who are just far away from you it's really far, uh, really uh, difficult to shoot them even if you're scoping really well and I think the nano suit kind of makes it look like they're getting dam less damage but I think overall it's fair it's a little bit better than before I'd say even like the handling of each gun like right now you saw a knife kill and the graphics and everything looked really nice. Another thing about the game that they added that's kind of different to Call of Duty is there is a 3 kill, 5 kill, and an 8, uh, eight kill streak, but 
the difference is you have to actually go and pick up dog tags. Now, as opposed to Call of Duty, immediately you get a kill, you get two kills, you get three kills, and then you could pop, you know, whatever kill streak you have equipped. In this game, you actually have to walk over the dead body and pick up the dog tags. I mean, this prevents things like campers, but earlier in the video, if you saw, I made a double kill. And two of the people were on buildings, and I made a double kill, but I didn't actually receive any credit towards a kill streak. Because receiving credit towards a kill streak required me to actually go to their dead body and pick up their dog tag, and I died before any of that happened. Another thing talking about this machine gun I'm using, I really like it because if you burst fire, it's it still kind of keeps the same accuracy as the assault class's weapon, the SCAR. But the main thing is, this machine gun I used had really high recoil. At the end of this video, you'll see I'll rank to 5, so I'll allow customization. And when I, when I pick my perks, I actually choose a perk that decreases the recoil of my weapon rather than faster reload. And you know, you can use things like this to make good combinations of weapons, and if you have any experience with the first person shooters, you'd know what that's like. Another thing I want to uh, talk about with Crisis is maneuverability. The maneuverability of your nano suit is amazing. You can run up walls like they're nothing, you can climb up walls like they're nothing. I mean, the nano suit's parkour skills are really good. Um, you know, besides maneuverability, you got sprinting, and the sprinting recharges quickly like we said before. But the sprinting is also really fast. Now, if you want to use the energy to sprint, it's really worth it. Um, you can get all the way across the map, spend like a couple of seconds to relax, and your energy will be back. Another thing about the abilities is cloaking. A lot of the enemies that you'll see cloaked in this game, like when I get onto the mounted MG, you'll see that you can still see their shadow. I think in bright maps like this, the main way to give away the position of a cloaked person is to look for moving shadows. Now, even with the moving shadow, I knew exactly where the guy was, but I shot him with the mounted MG and I felt like I still wasn't even hitting him. And this is kind of because even if you do hit them, they don't exactly come out of camouflage immediately. So, another thing I also noticed is that for the cloaking, if you're comparing this game to the previous versions, the cloaking in the previous version wasn't that good. You couldn't really use it because you could really be seen from far away. I'd say in this game they really did a good job on doing the graphics for the cloaking. And sometimes you can actually miss the person, which is kind of near you, just because you're not paying attention. And in the previous versions, I totally don't agree with that, and I think you can really see everyone in a cloak if you pay good attention. So, uh, it's a really good job from CryEngine 3, I believe, so... And for the case of that, uh, you guys don't know what the graphics engine was for the previous one, it was the older version of Cry CryEngine 2. So they made a couple of improvements, uh, such as the big uh, Direct DirectX 11 support, and even though if you don't have DirectX 11, it's backwards compatible, so it still works on your DirectX 10 or 9C uh, versions. Now, another thing you'd notice, um, the hipfire accuracy, even the crosshairs, aren't very forgiving. The hipfire accuracy in this game is kind of poor, and if you see probably around this time in the video, you'll see me shooting a close person with a mounted MG, you can see it's a little bit annoying, and I, I get him, but it takes me a while, even though I can see pretty much where he's at. The main things in this game is your cry engine suit. The four abilities really add a nice touch to games, like, compared to Call of Duty and uh, modern shooters where it's in war, but, you know, you're supposed to be an average human, you know. The nano suit really adds, like, um... A new aspect of the game and there's there's this one part in the video where I was indoors and then I immediately see two people rush in and I mean with games like Call of Duty if I was already aiming at the door and general hip fire accuracy I probably could have killed them both before they got to me but you know in this game the hip fire accuracy wasn't helping me as much and the main thing is they both blitzed in there with their armor on I mean I tried to even take out one of them but they're a little more durable, and because of that durability, they pushed me into the wall and they got me. So I just wanted to also mention that the demo that's been released right now is for only multiplayer, and we don't have any information on the single player other than the videos and little commentaries that the producers have put out. 
A main thing you can see uh, when you see the end of the round, you'll see that generally the kill counts are pretty low compared to games like Call of Duty. Like in the round that we, we showed in about 14 or some minutes, the, the highest kill count was about 14 kills. And I think that has to do somewhat of having the four abilities. Now if you see on the rank progress at the end of the round, you get three kinds of XP in the corner. You get armor XP, you get power XP, and you get stealth XP. Depending on how you play, uh, you get different amounts of experience for each of these, and then you can use that experience differently. Now I'm going to leave this uh, and show you some of the customization that I just unlocked. See, I unlocked rank 5, which allows customization. There's a primary weapon, secondary weapon, lethal grenade, section and the three perks. I'm going to take a look at the perks. Now air stomp is an ability where you jump up into the air and you come slamming down. In the montage at the beginning of the demo it shows somebody taking out four people huddled together in a specific type of game and you know it killed those four people but I personally have never been able to pull it off and use it use it in a way to kill people. I'm going to equip armor enhance and if you see on the right hand side for armor enhance it says upgrade upgrade rank 2. If you kill 100 enemies while in armor mode, you get the second upgrade. And that's that's I think cool. It gives us a more refreshing taste than just complete these random challenges with this, you know. It it gives it a more it gives it a more in-depth form of the enhancement. Now, if you look into the stealth section, you'll see three different kinds of stealth. I think I'm going to equip the covert ops, make my steps a little lighter and more quiet. So another thing that I wanted to mention is that you can actually see a video example of uh, what the, what each of the perks are and uh, I think it's a good addition if you're comparing this game to let's say uh, Black Ops as everybody is almost everybody has played it. In Black Ops you have to read you kind of don't exactly get a feeling at the very beginning of the game that how each perk is actually going to help you, but in this one I think it's a really good addition that they put a video of little clip showing what each perk is doing. Now I'm going to equip aim enhance onto my MG because I noticed when I'm aiming down the sights that uh, you know my recoil is a bit high and I've also noticed in this game aiming down the sights is really going to be your best friend seeing as the hip fire accuracy is pretty bad. Um, here it shows you uh, the four different ones what I was using was the heavy, the MK60 mod zero. So I'm gonna re-equip that for my customized class. Um, I don't have any more attachment unlocks, as you can see in the right-hand corner. So I can't really get the reflex side or anything else cool. But I really enjoy the iron side, so I think I'm gonna keep going with that. And I don't like the frag grenade, but uh, I guess I'll uh, change to flash when I get more. Okay, so I think uh, we are almost near the end of our video and I would like to say that this game really impressed me even though uh, I didn't really have a play for the uh, single player, I just saw the multiplayer and I think I'd definitely buy this game even though it's going to be the price of uh, $60 at the beginning. Now if you take a look at uh, on the video, I'm looking at the leaderboards and uh, you can see that there's a guy, I think it was hacking because he missed negative, what is that? 529,000 shots and he's got you know 6.9 million headshots <laughs> and 49,000 accuracy that's kind of funny but um now we're gonna get into like it love it and hate it exactly for our love we really love how the nano suit is customizable and the second thing we love is the graphics in this game for the like we're gonna say that the fact that they included the ranking and ranking system like Call of Duty, the kill streaks and perks and everything, it's awesome. And the one thing I really hate is the hip fire accuracy. I, I made an analogy. I think it's like shooting with a garden sprinkler. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, uh, we are almost done. So let us know what kind of demo games you want to see next time for us to uh, for commentate for you guys. And leave comments, subscribe, and rate us even if you hate us. Yep. Thanks a lot. Bye.